Monique. Yeah. Do all Christians go to heaven? I mean, I know unbelievers don't go to heaven unless they repent and, you know, accept Jesus as their savior. But what about Christians? Well, let's see. According to Galatians 5, 19 through 26, it says, The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, can you claim to be a Christian and do all these things that I just listed and say, God, please let me into heaven? I guess not. That must imply that there's more to Christianity than just proclaiming the title. If I claim to be a scholarly student and my grades don't reflect that, am I really all that scholarly? Okay, so there's more to than just saying I'm a Christian. What can that actually be? I'm glad you asked. Hey everyone, it's Monique Renewed. Welcome back for another video. So today's subject is going to be about whether or not all Christians will go to heaven. Dun dun dun. <laughs> My name is Monique and I make faith-based videos helping you to build your relationship with God. So if you're into that, I will welcome you to subscribe and join the fam. As per usual, I'll be referring to my handy dandy laptop because I pulled up my post on here on this topic. And if you would like to view that, I will leave a link in the bio. So let's get started. We're going to base this um, discussion on Matthew 7, 21 through 23. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's law. That is really tough right there. Many Christians, that's like our biggest, I don't, I don't want to say fear but it is almost like a fear like come judgment day when jesus says get away from me i never knew you so let's get right into it the people who said lord lord and they did all these things in the name of jesus and you know they did great things they they prophesied they cast out demons they performed miracles these are all great things so why is it that jesus says get away from me i never knew you these were people who actually, you know, done things in Jesus' name. You would think Christians, right? One, he said, you who break God's law. And then first he said, I never knew you. So I never knew you. Why would Jesus say I never knew you? It's because the, the particular group of people he was speaking to, yes, they used his name or proclaimed, you know, like people who proclaim Christianity, but they did not develop a personal relationship with Jesus. For him to say I, I actually knew you of course jesus knows everybody you know but he has to know you on a personal level you have to get to know him and then you who breaks god's law in other words to give um this people a group of name they're in general they're called lukewarm christians people who say yeah i know of jesus but that's that's the only that's the service level they take it to they don't take it to the next level they don't build their faith they don't turn from their ways you know you who break god's law they're still partaking in the sinful nature that they should have been changed from you know so in revelations 3 19 i'm sorry 3 15 through 19 it says this is jesus speaking again and he's actually speaking to a, a church He's not speaking to people who did not, you know, believe in him or not knew of him. He's speaking to a church. It says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. What's neither hot or cold? Lukewarm. I wish that you were one or the other. There's no gray areas with God. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Yikes. You say I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. Materialism, right? Material things. What about the 
things that aren't material. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy gold from me that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. So this is not monetary type of rich. Also buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness. White garments. It gives a sense of purity or holiness. Ointment for your eyes so you are able to see. Ointment for your eyes. That gives a sense of once living in spiritual darkness but now being able to see with the light that Jesus Christ provides. I correct and discipline everyone I love. No good father is going to keep allowing you to do everything that she once did before that was not right. Be diligent and turn from your indifference. Indifference is almost as bad as just having nothing to do with him in the first place. That's, all, that's suggesting it's almost as, as bad because he wants you to turn from that. So what everyone who says I am a Christian proclaims the title of Christianity will enter the kingdom of heaven. It's pretty clear here that the answer is no. So we just seen in the Galatians text, um, chapter 5, where it lists a bunch of acts of the sinful nature that will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. You have to think about it. Heaven is perfect, right? So it's not going to allow witchcraft. I made a video last week about New Age spirituality and its parallels to witchcraft if you want to check it out. Selfish ambition, jealousy, fits of rage. These things he warned us will not inherit the kingdom of heaven but the fruits of the spirit there's no law against these things so love joy peace kindness this is the type of fruit you need to bear in your life once you accept jesus and you have a personal relationship with him you can't say i'm saved and then exhibit no change at all he's going once you receive his holy spirit he's going to convict you of things that were wrong that you did that were unholy that were wrong in the past and transform you into a new creation so that's what this text is saying you have to be changed from your old ways into a new creation that's striving to be like christ you have to bear the fruit of the spirit in your life through your behavior if you are those who are found in christ your sinful nature has been crucified now does that imply that you must be perfect at all times 24 7 no, God knows we can't be perfect. We're still in this sinful flesh, of course, um, until, you know, we get our new glorified bodies. But in the meantime, that's why repentance is so great and people think it's a negative thing. No, it's a great thing. You should run to a repentance. So that means, you know, you, you sin, you make a mistake. You say, you know what, God, I messed up. You make things right and you keep it moving. He doesn't expect you to be perfect. That's not what this is about. But he does expect you to exhibit change in your life. And not to be the same sinful person that you once were. To experience no change at all. Having a personal relationship with God, with Jesus, means that you're going to be changed. You're not going to be the same person as you were before. If you are, then how can we tell the difference between somebody who claims to be a Christian and somebody who is not a Christian? Where's the differentiation between that? There is none. And that's the thing that differentiates between Christianity and other religions. Uh, many will say, well, why do you think Christianity is the right way? Is the only way to, that leads to God? Well, you have a personal relationship with Jesus. This is not just superficial. It's actually personal. It's real and it's interactive. You have the living Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. He speaks to you. You read scripture and it's as if it's applying directly to your life. You speak to him and he gives you an answer through various ways. So knowing that Jesus himself said that the gate to heaven is narrow, but the way to hell is broad, that should not scare you, but it should make you take your relationship with him more seriously. That's the point. He doesn't want lukewarm, you know, Christianity. He wants that type of Christianity that exhibits change and that demonstrates to the rest of the world who he really is. So when you bear these fruits, it, it bears witness to who God is and it makes others pay attention and want to turn to him also. So even, you know, when they say an unbeliever repents and turns from their ways and turn towards God, that implies an action. You're turning from your old ways and you're deciding to turn to God. There's a change that takes place there, even there. So that change ought to be exhibited among Christians as well. 
and it's it's a day-to-day -day change it's not something that happens overnight and we're not expected to be perfect but we are expected to strive to be more christ-like every day and that's the point so yeah that's all y'all that's it for today's video i will see you guys next week bye you know what's so funny i landed on right on the page that says lose your life to keep your life isn't that funny whoever seeks to keep his life will lose it and whoever loses his life will preserve it luke 17 33.